Hey, Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Digital Designer Studio. Uh, I got John Canepa joining me here, and we are taking a look at the AAV7A1, quite a mouthful, the uh, the amphibious assault vehicle, um, part of our Desert Storm lineup here. Uh, got a crew of three minifigures to go with that with some cool custom printing uh, on, their, on their helmets, or custom 3D printed helmets, um, some cool details on that. What have you got to? What are you, what are you doing there, John? You get some. You got oh, some. Well, I, I, went, I went to went one to of my play. used toy stores, and they had some of these Green Army men, and I, I love these Green Army men. I have about thirty or forty. And I'm like, I can have five more. They're only four dollars each. Can you imagine? <laughs> Anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about, though, Dylan. <laughs> You're right. Forgive me. <laughs> why did you? Why did you make me put them up there? Okay, so we're talking about the. And like I said, when I read it upside down, it looked like ambitious assault vehicle. <laughs> the ambitious assault vehicle. <laughs> it's a cool name. It's very ambitious. I mean, okay, so this one I have wanted to build for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Because actually once I, when I used to drive back and forth to San Diego, um, you drive by, right by Camp Pendleton. Well, the Marines, they do maneuvers right there off the freeway on the beaches. And I've seen these things coming ashore. You could see the, the uh, whatever the the uh, ship was out in the ocean. These you could see little specks from far away, coming, and then they would land on the beach. So you could kind of see. Now they have, of course, they have so much land there. The real, you know, war games go on over the mountains, sort of like east of the beaches. But when you're going down in that area, you'd be surprised. You see helicopters attack helicopters going up and down the beach they're doing some kind of maneuvers or they're in tandem with vehicles landing on the beach and it's just really awesome to to, to see that right? sounds incredible <laughs> so yeah so this particular vehicle it's like man that's in fact um i i'm a very much a movie nerd and i watch the same movie over and over to the dismay of my wife who's how can you watch the same movie over and over i'm like I enjoy it. And she, she, her comment is, you seem to enjoy it like you've never seen it before. Every time I watch it, right? Well, I always discover something new, but in the movie, um, probably get the title wrong, but uh, it's the second, I believe it's the second Jurassic Park movie, third Jurassic Park movie, when they end up looking for the parent's son who got stranded. And at the end of the movie, when they're close to the beach, they hear somebody on a loudspeaker. Well, they come out to the, they roll out to the beach, and this is what rolls up on the beach. I think they're like a dark gray color, or you know that ca the dark camo color. Um, but these are what rolls up there, and it's like, you know, the Marines are all pour pouring out. Uh, it's just really it's a it's a it's a it's a cool ending to that movie to have the this hardware roll up on the beach to to rescue them basically. Mm -hmm. Anyways, those no. so yeah so. Again, Landon did a fantastic job in the minifigures. I'll just point that out first. Um, it's a lot of cool features. The uh, the top opens up. You can see here the top opens up. You have all these, um, oops, I just squished this. All these antennas. You have a cool turret on top with a, a I believe it's a grenade launcher and a 50 uh, caliber machine gun on there. Um, so it's got some hardware on it. Um, the 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 part on this one that was very challenging was uh, it kind of has like poofy cheeks, right? So if you look at the actual vehicle, it's in the front, it's kind of shaped like a ship. And certain ships have that sort of like the, the bow has this little extra out, outcropping. And maybe it's designed because it's coming onto shore, right? So it needs to have a certain shape to be able to get onto shore without um getting stuck in the sand so i don't have a picture of the actual vehicle with me you'll have to look that up yourself but again that was a feature that i just couldn't ignore i could have left it off and just had the sides the sides come in and the front slope up and then you have this kind of weird i don't i can't remember what this thing is for anymore but this thing here but it wasn't enough it, it needed that extra and i call it uh poofy jaws you know yeah, jaws Gowls, yeah, exactly. So uh, I tried it. I tried a million different ways. I mean, nothing was quite right. 
And then I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I know Cody had you started using a lot of these, um, what were they called? They're ball joints, of course. They're ball joints, but they're mixel, mixel joints. I think, believe they call them mixel joints because sure. they came with mixel sets, right? They're great. They don't give you uh, all the sort of uh, animation that you want, but they do solve certain angles because you can not only swivel things, you can twist them a little, right? So in this case, we needed it to swivel over and then twist down a little bit. So you can see that the shape is not, um, it's not moving along only this axis or this axis. It's actually so, so here's X, here's uh, X, uh, Z, so it's moving on, so X, well, there's X, Y, and Z. <laughs> X is moves along uh, this. Y moves this way. X is. Anyways, take my word for it. It moves again. Uh, moves along an axis that we we need, which allows it to twist into the position that we want. I'll have to set it up on my X, Y, Z. <laughs> it's, it's all good. I think we understand kind of what you're trying to illustrate is that it kind of allows you to add curves, really, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to, um, especially when you're trying to capture something that isn't necessarily squared off, especially in the front. Right. Yeah. So, you know, some some of the hinges that we have only move in one axis. Um, you can add an extra piece to that and move it in two axis. But in this case, you can move it in any, you know, it really it really doesn't matter because it's on a ball. And, and it's a very really tight con connection, so you, I don't think you ever have to worry about these drooping. <clears throat> the jowls, unlike us humans, our jowls may start to droop. The jowls on this guy will not droop. So no guarantees, but I'm pretty sure. Even, uh, even with time, the age will not affect the AAV. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know, important, of course, with these kits is that the, the treads are able to move back and forth. You can't always roll them on the ground unless you have the right sort of ground to roll Carpet. them on. Yep. But uh, yeah, so you see, I'm holding it from the sides now. If you're to do that, perhaps with your base design out of, out of the box, you might have some problems. We'll we'll talk about that in just a second. But um, and then of course, what's nice about doing side pieces like this with a um, wing wing piece is you can kind of hide holes that if I took this off if you look at it from the side I'm giving away all the secrets here if you look at it from the side you can see there's kind of holes in there right it's not it's not smooth looking but once I put this in place it covers that up real nice covers it up looks cool and you never know that there's holes there and then of course you have a nice uh, opening ramp in the back so this is Again, like we were talking about with the limousine, there are certain features that you want to have in kits like this um, that that's how they load. They load from the back. Um, I'm not actually sure what happens on the top here. It does open up. You know, maybe they can jump out from there. A little sun tanning. Throw out, throw out, you know, they go through uh, New Orleans and they throw out uh, beads. No, we don't do that. Uh, I, I don't I don't prescribe throwing beads. Um, yeah, but it's a it's a feature that was on the vehicle we wanted to include. Again, you, and then you have uh, places for two figures to be in here. There's one guy. I, I think he's the commander, and then the driver maybe, and then of course the gunner here. That I think that's the way it goes. Don't quote me on that. I have to look it up. And then of course we have these cool little side compartments which you can put. You know. Um, let's see what kind of equipment can we put in there. I've, I've got a stray machine gun. We can throw a machine gun in there. Uh, we've got a pirate here. Pirate here with hook hands. We can put him. Luggage, pirates included. Pirates included. Uh, anyway, oh, some binoculars. Those would be good for later. We'll put those in there. So, so you can put some. You can roll up a, a net, or you can you can. Put anything you want, really. It just gives it a little extra ability for you, which I like, is the customer can actually add to the kit and make it their own, right? 
Yeah, customization, and then not only that, but uh, especially for people who maybe have uh, have served aboard these things, they they would know kind of what that gear in, in includes, and so they'd want to design it to the one that you know they rode in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, because there might be a different different way the front looks. So they might have different equipment on the front or or whatever. So, I was I was told, and I want to I want to find out who these people are because somebody told me through feedback that they were unhappy with the way the sides connect. And I want to tell them while I have, you know, we're all on this video call that they're absolutely right. I am sorry. Think about the movie. <laughs> I'm always talking about movies. Think about the movie, uh, The Grinch, okay, with Jim Carrey. At the end of the movie, he's stolen all the toys, right? But he brought them back. And the reason why they don't arrest him, why? Because he says, I'm sorry. You're very right. <laughs> I was like, why don't you arrest him? Why is he, he in jail? Because he said he was sorry. Okay. So hopefully that's enough. I, I'm so, sorry. No designer jail for John. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, because I have I have uh, more designs in, in me, I think. <laughs> okay, so it is a very cool kit. It really looks cool. You get it put together. Put on a you know put it on display it's beautiful right but if you want to be able to like play with it let's try that so first i'm going to uh pluck the turret off which this always comes with it so i'll have to put that back on and i broke it okay we're good let's just put that aside for now take off the minifigures now the top here uh, i'll just say was very challenging and i'll try not to drone on about this because I wanted to have this nice piece in here, but there was no way to attach it right to the main body. So it's a little loose. Once you have it on top, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to come off the side. It's fine. Um, but it was a very challenging piece, especially when you have limitations on what you've designed. So, you know, we put on the side pieces. Well, they're going to get in the way of anything I put down this direction, right? So... There is ways to be able to, you know, if I had it, if I had it my way, this thing would be like I could, I could drop it and it wouldn't break, right? Doesn't always, not always the case, but you have to consider the next step. So, for example, let's say you're designing, and this is just hypothetical, okay? Let's say you're designing a landing craft, right, from World War II, to be a little more specific. Definitely not used by the British. Definitely not used by the British, no. No, no, the UKers, but not the British. Uh, the guys that fought uh, in pixels, those guys. Um, if you're going to design a ship like that, right, it's going to have two skinny sides and a bottom, right? Because it's got a ramp that comes down. So the sides themselves are not that strong. But you have to consider, well, what happens when I attach them to the other part? Will they then be strong enough? So collectively, they're strong. So when you when you're when you're creating something, you can sometimes, and an individual piece cannot be as strong as you want. Keep in mind that you are going to be attaching it to something, and if it's solid below, it's not going anywhere. It'll be fine. So that's just something I wanted to point out. If somebody was wondering why this thing wasn't attached, well, I could not figure out how to attach it. But once it's in place. It's not, it's not involved with the strength of the vehicle. It's just involved at that point with the look of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. so we, we, we make that distinction when we're building. So anyway, so don't blame me for that. I couldn't do anything about that. That's an interesting tidbit, though, because I, I do like the point you make in the sense that you're not necessarily, you, you have to look ahead in your builds and know that what you're trying to do here is capture a specific look of something. And if you need to use a different portion of the build to reinforce the, the strength of that so that you keep the initial look, um, you know, that's something that you you have to take into the design process. So I think a lot of builders out there would appreciate that just kind of inside knowledge. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, again, with this fictional landing craft, um, fictional, I'm not even sure what this is anymore. Quest quotations? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's got to hold, it's got to be wide enough to hold a tank, but not so wide that it looks looks wrong. Right. So we can't just keep building out, but you want to make it strong enough against someone can play with it without 
crying because mom, the mean designer didn't create it strong enough and now I'm sad. Anyway, not implying that anybody cries. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off and I'm just gonna show this. And what I can do is if, if people are interested in this more in more detail, I can, you know, I can write up some instructions on how to fix. So basically what was happening is the sides um, aren't strong enough, okay? And I made them so strong now that they won't even come off. <laughs> so basically I'm going to, uh, this may or may not translate well, but we'll try and I'll do it as fast as I can. It's all good. So basically, what you get with the kit to hold on the sides is two like two things that look like this here. I'll put that close to the camera. Can you can you see that okay? Yeah, for the most part. It's a plate, a bracket, and a two by two, basically. In this case, it's a uh um I can't remember what they call this piece, but it's a it's a weird brick. Let's just call it a weird brick. So the two there's there's a total of six connection six connection studs. Two of these, two like this, and then one more set. The other set we're not gonna touch. That one's fine the way it is. In this case, you can fix this by actually using this piece here, which is that's a bracket that I just showed is a one by two up one by two. Mm -hmm. A one by two up two by two. So it's gonna have twice as many connection studs on here, right? So that's that actually alone helps because now you're doubling for this two two spots, you're doubling how much you can connect with. Now, what I also did was is next to it on the um, where the little seats are inside, and I'll I'll show this closely. You can see where the where you sort of like put the guys against here so they can sit down. Um, there is a tile sitting down next to where the bracket attaches, right? So what I did was I took a couple of two by two, excuse me, one by two plates. I put those in between and then I use this tile to lock down the bracket to the actual other parts, right? So that made it stronger. Now it's attached to the vehicle better and this attaches to the wall of the, the, the sidewall better, right? And it was luckily, I guess I got lucky, there's enough room to do this. There's actually room. Why I didn't do it in the first place? I don't know, you know? Scream, scream, scream my name a couple of times. Damn you, John, Rampart, whatever. But I didn't do it on purpose. Okay. So that solves part of the problem. The other part of the problem is this thing here. You know, we, I, we used three uh, one by two plates with hinge, uh, with handle type two. Because we wanted this thing to be as strong as possible. But what it does is it, anytime you touch this piece, this piece, it's so strong it pulls everything off. Even though there's, it's connected with like four studs total, it, it comes off. So since I'm, now I'm using this bracket, right? It's got four connection points. I need to fill in some space. So right now you get this one tan plate and the former part, this piece here attaches right to that tan plate right there. What we've done is we actually have, instead of using a brick here, I've used two plates on top of the tan plate and then use this little part, kind of came in handy in this case. It's got two studs. It's a tile with two studs, basically. So what I'm doing is I'm using that to hold these three pieces in place to keep it from moving, right? So the pressure of the vehicle holding the walls on is now actually holding this piece too, right? So I'm, I'm solving both problems with this one sort of, so we're doing this twice. We're doing it here and we're doing it on the other side. That doubles how much connection point we have. It also holds this in place so this thing won't 
every time I touch it won't fall off. Yeah. Because Lego sometimes is too strong. Mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't really do what you want it to do. It does what it wants to do. <laughs> yeah, sure. So by doing that, and, and again, um, using, I'll put this back here, using this tile to hold the bracket down to the actual plates that are part of the base of the vehicle, which if you built it, you sort of, you pr probably are getting this at this point. Um, those three sort of like all connected changes solves that problem. So my apologies for not handling that in the first place. But anyway, so so it is fixable. Now I've completely torn the vehicle apart, but you did see it for a while there in place. So for people's reference, if they want to see the different uh, pages that I'm talking about in the instruction book, you're talking about, um, oh, let's say pages 17, and this for one side of the vehicle, you, you can just duplicate it on the other side. 17 to 20, let's say, pages 17 through 20, that's the AA7V, wait, wait, AAV7A1, the ambitious assault vehicle, very ambitious. This, the vehicle actually self, itself wants to become a tank, so it's very ambitious. Anyway, that's dumb. Um, that's the instruction book. I just built it last night. I uh, have to say these improvements make a huge difference. It's still an excellent time to offer up that advice. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's plenty of, of stuff that people build that they want to go back and rework various things like that. And not only that, but you know, when you're putting out two models a week uh, as a company, et cetera, you know, that's a lot of pressure on the designers to make sure they're cranking stuff out. So I think that it's uh, it's understandable that if you need to swap a few things there on the back end, then uh, you make that knowledge available, like right here at a, a designer studio, and and people are able to do that. I'm passing along the knowledge, and yes, I I don't have a lot of excuses. I was getting ready to move to California, but other than that, <laughs> I don't think anybody will come banging down your door, John. So you don't have to worry about it. We, we we're looking forward to what's around the corner, and uh, and and we know you. Uh, you put the utmost care into into your builds. Um, is there anything else on the AAV7 itself that you wanted to go over? No, uh, I, again, it's, uh, I think you're probably, I mean, I can't guarantee this, but my guess is you'll see this again, probably in a different color. And maybe with those improvements included. Um, yeah, because it's, it, it's, I think what I was getting to earlier, it's, it's such a spacey, science fiction looking vehicle it looks like something that they would have seen in a movie which you have seen in the movies but it's a real vehicle right um it just looks like uh something from um, um oh, what was the starship troopers <laughs> anyway that i think it's a fantastic looking vehicle i think mary did a nice job of altering it to the the look that you guys wanted for the desert bricks or or whatever. Desert Marine. Storm Bricks, yep. Desert Storm Bricks, yeah. So I imagine this would have been the one that would have been on the attack uh, um, aircraft carrier, right? This would have been part of that battalion of Marines or whatever whatever that is. I can't remember what it's called. But uh, yeah, and then again, the uh, exquisite, exquisite printing on the minifigures and um, just enough on the vehicle to make it look cool, so. No, it's a. I think it's a. It's a good kit. Again, every kit has its challenge. Those gels. I'm like, man, thank goodness I thought of that. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the shape of the vehicle is excellent. We're looking forward to seeing uh, seeing what it looks like in a in a maybe even more modern sense and in a kind of a different color as well. When I when I I mean I I, I built it in gray, and then this is the this is the base of it. I mean, still, if if you if you built it, you kind of recognize that that's the core of it right there. Um, but I did it in a camo pattern, and it looks sharp. So maybe we'll see it in a camo pattern down the road. Very very cool. The road. <laughs> so there well, it is, Maniacs, the designer this? studio for the AAV7. Wait, yes, AAV7A1. Boy, you got me my mix all talked up here, John. The ambitious, no, amphibious assault vehicle uh, from Desert Storm Bricks. John, thank you very much for joining me, and thank you for watching.